today's guest is Katie Griffin of Katie Griffin Casting. She is one of the most supportive and sweetest casting directors that I know, and I'm so thrilled to have her on the show today. So stay tuned to get some knowledge from Katie. Hello, Katie. Hi. Hello. Keisha, thank you so much for having me. Of I'm doing course. really great. Of course. I'm so excited. When you said you would come on, I was like over the moon because I've known you for a few years now, just through casting, and you've always been so just kind and wonderful. And I was like, when you said that, I'm like, that boosted my confidence level a thousand times. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I'm so proud of how far you've come. And yeah. we go back, we'll say a couple of years, <laughs> we go back a little more than a couple of years. And just yeah. to see how far you've come as an actress and now seeing you, um, you know, host this program, I'm just really happy and excited for you. Yeah, I just want to see, you know, stepping out and just doing something, you know, as we all are during this time to keep ourselves busy, you know, yeah. Yeah. And taking, taking a risk, taking a chance. So, um, so yeah, so Katie, tell me and tell the viewers where you are, what you do, I guess we'll start with that. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay, so um, my name is Katie Griffin. I am a casting director. Um, how I got into the business is very funny. I was a child actor, um, and I had big dreams of being on Broadway. Um, I am a singer, and I went to college for musical theater in Miami, and I actually studied at their musical theater conservatory. Um, I graduated uh, from college with a Bachelor of Music and uh, a minor in film and television, and um, I knew that I wanted to work in the industry. I went on a few Broadway auditions, really tough, and... Um, I learned very quickly that my uh, my dancing capabilities weren't as amazing as, let's say, my voice. So unfortunately, the casting directors weren't able to hear me sing because I couldn't get past the dance audition. But that's okay because I had interned and then assisted a casting director um, in Miami uh, for a brief period of time, and I really learned the ropes of casting. I assisted in uh, casting feature films, commercials, uh, music videos, telenovelas, oh. and I, yeah, very cool <laughs> stuff. And um, I learned uh, that... It was interesting because the people who I was casting in my mind, they were actually getting booked. And so I kind of thought that, all right, well, maybe I have a knack for it. Mm -hmm. So after that, I, I thought, you know, let me try my hand in, in casting. And I moved to New York to pursue a career in casting. And um, it was pretty tough in the early 2000s getting, you know, a legit casting assistant position in one of the big offices. So I kind of fell into reality casting. And I worked in reality casting for about eight or nine years uh, while also casting music videos and commercials on the side, like still having that love of, you know, acting and casting. Then I was kind of able to, to um, uh, pursue that style of casting while also cutting my teeth in reality television. So I got a lot of experience doing guerrilla style casting, like walking up to random strangers on the street and convincing right. them to be on, you know, a, a show because I was a student, I was a film student at NYU and they had to be in my senior thesis film, also known as Cash Cab. So it was get them to the cab, get them in the cab, then send them on the way. Oh. So yeah, so I, I really learned how to, uh, you know, hone my abilities and talents for just talking to people and, you know, gaining trust and also, while also being earnest and genuine myself. But in addition to that, like, using the skills that I learned from um, the casting director in Miami, you know, using those skills and finding the perfect person for that role. So I was able to do that. And then in um, about 2011, I decided to start Katie Griffin Casting. And my focus was scripted children's television programming. Um, I believe I had you come in for Sprout a few mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then still 
casting music videos and um, commercials. And then I started to branch out to documentaries, uh, voiceovers, uh, medical industrials, uh, short films. So I, I truly have a love of casting. And so there really isn't much I won't cast, but I will say the, the one thing I still have yet to cast, even though it is in my background, is theater. So I have not ever cast theater before, mm-hmm. even though I, that's where I got my start. So yeah, which is so cool. I, I already learned a fun fact about you that you actually sing. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Yep. That's so cool. I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. And yeah. One of the things that stood out to me with what you just said is that I, one of the, one of the things I wanted to point out when we in our conversation was I love how you really encourage and support other people. And I've noticed that a lot lately on social media. And that is like, that speaks a lot of you, I believe, because, you know, as a casting director, just to take the time out of your day and your schedule to acknowledge, you know, actors that some of us, we do work really hard and, you know, and, and other, even, even women who are just push, you know, pushing themselves, you know, and, what you just said earlier that you did not, did you literally start your casting company from scratch, Katie Griffin and casting? Yeah. So, um, work like I, I, I did. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of difficult breaking into the, the casting business. Um, you know, there are only so many casting directors or in the early two thousands, there were only so, so many casting directors in the city. And, um, you know, so you either go and assist, or intern for them or assist for a few years until you can, you know, uh, really maintain like a, a full-time position there. Mm-hmm. Or I could have gone a different route, which is what I did. Mm-hmm. I went into reality casting um, and I was very fortunate. I got to travel the world throughout my 20s. So I was essentially living out of a suitcase, traveling around the world, casting people anywhere from Israel to Bali to um, South Asia, like uh, kind of everywhere, the UK, yeah, South America. So that was a ton of fun. And um, I I certainly wouldn't trade that. but yeah, I, I did kind of approach this business a little bit differently than, say, someone who's, let's say, graduated either film school or theater school with a dream of working as a, a, a casting assistant in an office or at a studio or in a network and then really like, you know, slowly working your way up. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And quite frankly, I'm pretty tenacious. You know me. I'm really tenacious. I I just go after. Um, Yeah. But to your point, um, I was an actor. So I know exactly what it's like to stand on your mark and get the sweats and the cotton mouth and (laughs) be very nervous under the lights and you don't know entirely who you're speaking to if the rest of the studio is pitch black that's very nerve-wracking and that's the reason why I'm on this side of the camera and not on that side (laughs) so yeah so I know what it's like to have walked in your shoes so the style of casting that I kind of grew up with was very let's say maybe not as personal the t- the personal touch wasn't a hundred percent there mm-hmm. and um yeah so I like to bring something a little different to the table but also just you know mutual respect if I'm asking an actor to be a hundred percent vulnerable and honest in their performance I'm gonna give them a hundred percent of my time when they walk through the doors that's awesome yeah so speaking of once of casting a little bit more, what is your, I guess you are, what are you most passionate about or your favorite part of your, your job cast, in casting? Yeah. So yeah, casting is my passion. I've been doing this since I was 21 years old and here we are 20 years later. I still have the same love today that I had for it when I was a kid walking in with, you know, big wide eyes. Yeah. So I think for me, the, what really excites me the most is, um, you know, when the, the doors of my studio close and I place actors on their mark and the cameras start rolling that's where I feel I thrive the most Mm -hmm. and where I feel I'm supposed to be 
Mm -hmm. And walking through the casting process uh, with talent and, and my clients and and, um, you know, informing talent or their agents or their management, um, if they've gotten the role, that also gives exactly. me the goosebumps still. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then finally, of course, seeing yeah. the fruits of the labor, whether it be on screen or in print, um, that gets me so excited to I know bet. that yeah. I helped that production be a success. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so one of the things I know as an actress um, or an actor, we, it's, it, when we audition for something, it's always that waiting by the phone. And I know, for, I know I'm getting better at it. Like, you know, the whole, like, did I book it? Did I book it? Did I book it? Type feeling mm -hmm. in my mind, you know? So how long, and I, I have an idea what the answer is, but some people might not know. How long from start to finish, from you casting to actually making those booking calls, um, you know, that you booked it, how long does that take? Well, honestly, it all depends on the project. If it's a commercial, talent is booked within 48 hours um, after the audition because it's so fast paced. If it's an industrial, it's typically about a week because um, a lot of execs need to weigh in corporate execs they need to weigh in if it's a tv series whether it be scripted or reality depending on the role typically it's about a week to two weeks because so many producers and execs need to weigh in and then if it's film sometimes it can take a month because so many producers and studio heads uh, they're weighing in mm -hmm. and again it all it all depends on the role um and the caliber of, of the talent and, you know, who it's down to and what's attached and mm -hmm. contracts and things like that. Right. Yeah. yeah and, there's, and then there's always callbacks sometimes. Yep. And multiple callbacks sometimes and multiple re reads and chemistry reads and mm -hmm. all those fun things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mine yeah. Is what I taught, taught myself and what all of us need to remember is just to let it go you know, and just let it Oh go. my gosh, absolutely. Yeah. What I like to tell talent is um, to not stay focused. A lot of talent, um, they treat the, the job, the actual booking as the end goal. The mm -hmm. end goal is for you to do your best work in the audition because that's the, the actual job of an actor. That's where the real acting and the real magic happens. Um, you are aware once you then get to set it's very technical but the real magic happens in the audition process and in the audition studios so um you know treat the audition as if that's the end goal and so you just got to give your best you got to show up on time you got to be um you know as earnest as possible in your slate and take that beat and before you even open your mouth you need to already be in character so then that very first line is the most honest you know, the most honest line you're, you're going to say in the script or in the monologue. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, a nice, pleasant thank you and really, you know, um, earnest and genuine thank you, or gratitude for being there. And then you're off to your next gig. Just leave, leave it in the audition room or in the studio and then just keep it moving to the next audition. And hopefully you get to the point where you're doing so many auditions that when you are called by your, your agent or by your manager that you've gotten the booking, you'll need to be reminded which one that is because you've done so many this week. So right. Yeah. That's the, that's the dream. That's the goal. That's, so. the goal. that's definitely yeah. the dream. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So as we yeah. all know, Katie, we are in this very strange, different times, you know, with this mm -hmm. pandemic. And I'm sure you've already been probably asked this question before. What is your, how do you foresee things are going to change if they are, haven't already, you know, um, during this pandemic? What do you, what are you seeing as of right now? Sure. So, um, you know, for the last five years, we have been incorporating self-tapes into our castings. It's just the way um, the cookie has crumbled based on producers and directors' availability. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just part of how technology and how we're, the industry is, is kind of moving. Mm -hmm. So we have to be as flexible and adaptable as possible. 
yes, we're hosting in-person sessions. We were pre-COVID hosting in-person sessions, but we were also incorporating self-tapes into, um, you know, the repertoire of casting, so to speak. So um, now that we are in quarantine and now that we do have a lot of, um, you know, health and safety restrictions that we have to abide by, we're being adaptable and we're doing virtual casting sessions. Um, yeah, we should already be experts if we aren't already, we should be experts in self tapes. Yeah. So maybe right now you've perhaps enhanced some lighting or you got yourself a tripod instead of leaning your camera up on a book, bookshelf. Now you have a tripod right. or um, maybe you've gotten yourself a microphone or even a really nice pop-up backdrop with, you know, blue and the chroma green. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you've in, made that investment just to enhance your, uh, your own casting package and your own self tapes. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, we are now attacking virtual casting sessions. So whether they be hosted on Zoom or some other um, platform, we have to really, really get a handle on um, how those operate yeah. so we can present our best selves. And so uh, we don't have any technical issues. Yeah. Um, because the, um, the amount of work isn't as plenty as it was pre-COVID. Um, yes, there's work, but it all comes down to, um, you know, the amount of submissions that we are receiving, which is like far more than we've ever received. Oh, yeah. So now we have to, as casting directors, we have to be very discerning in who we select mm -hmm. um, for the roles and who we're going to present. So maybe back in the day, we'd be like, oh, is there any way you could please reshoot because we can see, you know, your dirty laundry in the background? Like, yes, right now we are, we are being, um, you know, forgiving in some regards, but when it comes to a setup, like actors, we should all be somewhat professional now in like what our setup looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make a huge investment, but at least what the setup looks like. And you do have to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot from talent. They'll say, you know, it's resistance. They'll say, yeah, but Katie, I really prefer in-person sessions because I'm getting the energy and I'm working off of the energy of, of you or the client right. or the director. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing, but we have to do what we can during this time to survive in the industry. So we've just got to be adaptable. Yeah. yeah, we just, we just have to. And so when you are in a virtual casting session, Yes, this is a strange thing that you and I are doing, but treat a virtual casting session the same way. We're still having a, an honest conversation, very open and honest. Be as open and honest with casting, and we want you to win. So we will take our time with you. Good thing is you are in the comfort of your own home. So you could have your script taped to the wall. You could have your sight lines. I see a lot of talent. They have these little post-its where they will put maybe one in front of or just on top of their uh, computer. Uh, what's it called? The, the camera. Thank you. They'll put it on top of the camera and then maybe another one just to the left of the lens and then maybe a third one on like a water bottle or something just off off center as if you are speaking to a reader yeah because some some casting directors have different needs in how they present to their clients mm -hmm. so you as an actor have to be really adaptable with um what each casting director is requesting and it's not that hard you either look straight in lens a little bit off or off this way as if you're talking to a reader so you just got to be adaptable um, practice. Like, when it comes. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I was going to say, and also, you know, practice ahead of time, you know, before you actually get on the phone, mm -hmm. practice, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when it does come to um, in-person sessions, we're not going to be hosting in-person sessions until well after the um, vaccine is widely distributed. So talent, like, please wrap your heads around that and really, really let that sink in because it's going to be a while. Mm -hmm. If there is anything in person, I would say the in-person um, session, so to speak, will be um, callbacks. 
Got it. Please don't expect them to be 20 person callbacks. It may only be two or three actors being called back. So then that reverts back to you presenting your very best delivery in um, your self tape or in your virtual casting session. Mm, I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's so, it's so, it's so important. One of my friends, she had one of those virtual sessions recently and mm -hmm. she was great about it. We got together and she's like, let's practice, you know, or, uh, you know, can I practice with you before I get on this? And mm -hmm. she was prepared. And that's all we, we just need to be prepared. And she ended up booking it too, by the way, because she was love prepared, it. you know what I mean? So I haven't personally had a virtual one yet. I've just, I've, but I've done lots of self tapes over quarantine. But, um, but you know, when I do one, I will make sure that I'm ready and prepared to go. That's all it takes. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. And I do, I will say, you know, when we are finally back uh, out there again, personally, you know me, when I see you in my casting sessions, obviously I always go in for a hug. We know each other, we work together. Mm -hmm. I may be a bit hesitant to do that post, mm -hmm. you know, post vaccine. For a while. But I'm going to work on my warm smile and my, <laughs> my warm and welcoming delivery so you can feel comfortable when you come into my audition. Yes, and on that note, one other thing I wanna point out that I've learned also and you kind of touched on this a little bit a minute ago, is that I, I, I learned to start seeing casting as people. You know, I, I went in for the longest time, like just so nervous, like, oh my gosh, you know, you know, like, you know, not necessarily thinking, but kind of people think this could make or break my career, happen, whatever. And once I dropped that thinking and it was just like, you know, Katie or whoever I, people I would see in New York, you're just people and you want us to win. That's what you said mm -hmm. earlier. You want us to win. Mm -hmm. And once I started doing that, it like made me be more myself and I wasn't as nervous and I started doing so much better because I was able to kind of just act like a human, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. And I've, I've stood in your shoes before, um, you know, as I was coming up in the ranks as a kid going into casting sessions, they were terrifying to me. Right. Um, right. I think that there is a misconception that, and who even knows how it was started, that casting directors are the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Sure. You could look at it that way. I personally don't. I look at it as we are all on the same team or we're all in the same boat. I look great when you look great. If you walk in uninformed and if I'm cold and the session feels awkward, that energy is going to come off in your casting or in your audition and you aren't going to look fantastic. And then I'm going to have to explain you and why that was to my client as soon as you walk out the door. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to be in that position. I want when you walk out that door to say, we've got to book her and here are all the reasons why. Mm -hmm. And so I, have tried for the past, you know, 11 years that I've had my business, I've, I've tried very hard to have that connection with talent. Sometimes it's been received as a bit of a surprise because of, let's say, experiences you may have had with other casting directors. But I will say that, you know, and I stand by that, if someone comes into a casting session with me, most likely I'm going to be the person that you see either stepping into the waiting room opening the door, standing you on your mark. A lot of people don't actually expect that the person who's opening the door and placing them on their mark is the actual casting director. They assume that my male assistant or someone else is the casting director. And they're like, you're Katie? And I say, yes, of course I'm Katie. Like, I, I am me. <laughs> this is who I am. So it's... Um, that's, it's just who I am. And I think that it sets a tone for my castings. And I think that that's why my clients are, you know, pretty happy with the work that I do I because it, I bring something different to the table. You do. You sure yeah, do. you do. It's so Thank true. You. Whenever you go to our casting office, she's just always like right there, right Thank at the you. door. And I walk in, <laughs> always just so friendly. So I love it. I do. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so Okay, we're gonna wrap up a little bit here. I want you to just sure. tell us a fun fact about yourself so we can once again, going back to that seeing you as a person, but something fun you, 
or a fun, something fun you did during quarantine? Let's maybe do that. Sure. Um, well, something fun that I've been doing during quarantine is designing houses. So um, in the last five, six months, I have designed two houses. Um, my husband and I, uh, we recently purchased a property um, and it was just simply a renovation and now it's become something quite larger and it's basically wow. I really enjoyed the renovation design and now we've gone with a totally different route and we are uh, just building based on my designs. I do not have a design background. I just know what I like. I love Pinterest. I love pinning things and I love placing things in a room that I think would work for our lifestyle. And um, I can't say that this will be our forever home, but it certainly has been so fun that we expect to stay there for, for many years. That so I've so cool. Yeah, cool. I've been having a lot of fun. Doing I'm, I'm that. a real estate agent, so I yeah. mean, that's my side hustle. Um, and so when you say design homes, you mean is there like a computer program that you use, or are you just kind of like legit just? You know. Well, it's, it's funny because I don't have CAD or anything like that to design, actually like physically design. But what I will do first off is I draw something out on paper and then I imagine myself walking through a room where I would like something placed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I start, um, because I'm really good at uh, photo editing, I've had to become quite a bit of a craftsman with photo editing based on casting, right. you know creating casting packages for my clients. Mm -hmm. So I'm really great with that. So I can then place images and start moving things around. It's very rudimentary when you look at it, but I have been told by some builders, what do you do for a living? Are you a designer? I say, no, I don't work in that line of work at all. That's not even my background. I just really like design. It's, it's right. a ton of fun. You're creative. That's creative. Very, yeah. yeah. Yep. It. Yeah, so I've I've been doing that, and so now I've designed the second house, and now I'm working on uh, landscape architecture. Wow. Don't know anything about that, but <laughs> drawing little trees. So that's happy <laughs> little trees. So that's I love it. That is so <laughs> cool, cool. I love when yeah. like said, once again, it's a, it's such a when you're creative, you just find these things, and you just it just kind of gives you that joy, that that fulfillment. Sure. You know, yeah. Fun. Yeah, and I can say I've worked on a few HGTV home shows, and yeah, seeing seeing uh, what goes on on those shows from behind the scenes versus what the actual reality is, um, yeah, obviously very different. And yeah, you might have in your mind like, oh, but this is what it was like. So is it my experience going to be the same way? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, not at all. So I would highly recommend that um, if you're ever interested in you know, even small renovation projects. And whenever you're reaching out to contractors, definitely um, maybe don't use an Instagram as the way to find them because <laughs> that's the trouble that we kind of got ourselves into. Oh so sometimes what you see on social media isn't 100% always what it is <laughs> in reality. <laughs> That's a novel idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And it's really cool to hear that your side hustle is um, is home set selling because it's flexible. That's why I love, love it. That. Well, and, and believe it or not, it's so crazy right now. So many people are buying houses. I don't know what's yep. going on. I'm like, I thought we were not working. Like, what's happening? But people, because the interest rates are so low, that's why. I that is why. And also, um, the virtual. Uh, what at least what I've heard from realtors is virtual um, showings are not a turnoff to people. They're people they're looking through. Yep, they are buying perhaps sight unseen in yeah. person, sight unseen. Yep. So okay. yeah, yeah. So that's great for you. That's fun. I you know you know I need flexible because when I just yep. um, that takes first place for me. So yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, it is. Uh, one other thing I did want to touch on um, that we didn't discuss is I did want, and I hope, um, I hope it's okay because you didn't include it, but I'm like, you know what? I actually do want to, to touch on this. Um, 
something that I wish talent knew uh, about casting is um, there, I think sometimes talent have the misconception that casting directors get the final say. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we do not. Um, we always put our best talent forward to our clients um, and can provide input on talent, but the decision is always up to the clients in the end. I mean, unless, of course, a client says um, they're not sure what they're looking for and they just kind of leave it up to me or my assistants to choose, um, more times than not, they, um, they have a specific you know, the, the, the casting specs were created by the writers and the directors and the producers. Mm -hmm. So they actually get the final say. Got so it. that's yeah. something I wanted to bring I'm up. I brought that up. I, yes, I'm glad you mentioned, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. reminded that one because that's a good, that's a very good point for people to understand, you know, mm -hmm. once again, you're there to like, you're there to kind of, you know, to guide basically, like you yep. said, present to them the talent you feel is, you know, would be great for this project, but they make the ultimate decision. Yeah, yeah I, I did want to bring that up. And I also hear a lot from talent, you know, how, how are casting directors changing or going to change the landscape of the industry? Um, and it's kind of complicated based on the style of casting that I'm presently doing, which is mostly commercial casting, unless you're a casting director who, let's say, is like the head of development at a studio or a network. Um, casting typically does not oversee the actual role breakdown. Um, that's, like I said, that's based on the writers and the directors and the producers. Um, but I will say casting, like the entire industry, casting, um, we are having conversations uh, with our clients about, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever possible, we are able to, um, you know, enhance a casting package with the best talent. Maybe not exactly what was asked. Mm -hmm. We will give them what is asked, but we will also give them a little bit more based on the level of talent and who we feel would be a great fit. But I will say at the end of the day, um, casting directors do not get the final stay. Mm -hmm. But we are working, believe me. I'm and there are, other, there are other great ways to promote, you know, diversity and equity and inclusion. I, I do so on social media. Mm -hmm. That has become- Thank you for that yeah. too. Thank you for that. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's become a hobby of mine. Yeah. Just giving talent mm -hmm. um, shout outs. I mean, if I say that I'm, if I say that I'm an advocate for all talent mm -hmm. at this time in our, you know, the crossroads of our current culture, I have to say that I'm an advocate for black talent. Yeah. So black talent, mm -hmm. I am putting forth, whether I've worked with you or not, yeah. I will uh, promote yeah. black talent and talent of color. That means so. that, that is so, that's mm -hmm. amazing because, you know, like I said, we, you know, we want to also be seen, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. heard and just, you know, we can do, we're, you know, very capable and, you know, so it's, it's so important and I'm so grateful that you did that. Cause like I said before, mm -hmm. I feel like I, I, I the utmost respect for casting directors and for you to take the time to do that is really impressive so thank you for that yeah. yeah of course I mean I wouldn't be in business if it wasn't for talent so um, at this time the very least I can do is whether I'm giving 10 minute generals to talent I'm giving a few hours a day to talent who I have and haven't worked with just to give some feedback on headshots monologues maybe commercial copy or maybe where they are and they're in um, you know their their careers and maybe where they might be interested in headed um, or heading and then uh, again like where it come when it comes to promoting talent whether we've worked together or not I'm happy to promote talent um, I do I, the entire industry is aware that things need to change and um, conversations are being had um, it does fall on you know every single aspect and every department on a production needs to have people of color. Um, and it starts in, let's say, in with casting, it has to start in the writing rooms and then it moves forth with production producers. Then it moves forth with casting breakdowns and then through casting and then 
up to the director and producers on who's being uh, approved for the roles, but we are doing our very best to, um, you know, as much as we possibly can, even if it's through promotion, through showcases and um, networking and continued conversations with our clients, we're casting directors are doing our, our very best to really change the landscape of the, you know, or the face of the industry. That's exciting. That's yeah. really exciting. And I'm so great. For yeah. Time. <laughs> you know, so that's good. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. And I honestly, I can't wait to see what kind of programming we're going to be oh. seeing. Like I need to see more. We all need to see more yeah. Yeah. because I've heard from a lot of, of talent um, who are not Caucasian. I have never seen that much of let's say, uh, people who look my, like myself on camera and then to, or on the screen, and then to see an entire, an entire cast mm -hmm. who look like me, mm -hmm. it has changed how I, you know, view the industry or what I might go out for, or even take a chance on being an actor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because if you aren't seeing yourself represented, why would you even maybe perhaps want to take the chance? So true. And it's, so. and it can get frustrating at times, you know, when you don't see it. And sure. You get those opportunities. It gets very frustrating. And, and like you said, you made a great point yep. looking up to, you know, when I was teaching years ago, I remember in the school I was in, I was the only black teacher at the time. And I remember the kids just like, wow, you know, that gives them like hope, like, <laughs> wow, you know, you're, you know, yeah. I can be a teacher too, you know, this is so, you know, amazing. So I feel like representation does matter, you know, so I think it's very, very absolutely important. all industries everywhere. So, yeah, absolutely. Even, even casting directors, I'm a member of CSA and CSA is working very hard right now to um, initiate more African-American and other casting director casting directors of color into uh, CSA. Mm. It's just there's just not enough, yeah. and um, it's predominantly white women. So there there needs to be more. Mm -hmm. So um, that's so so great. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, well, thank you. Yeah, Katie, I so appreciate just spending time with you and getting to know yeah, you, you better, too. letting everyone else out there know how amazing you are and. Just, you know, thank you so much for the opportunities that you give to all of us, you know, that you've, that I know for myself and so many other people, you know, I know when I first came to you, I was very new. So for you to just give me a shot, that meant, that means everything to me too. So I really, really appreciate that for, you know, myself and speaking for so many others as well. And is there a way, where can people find you on social media if they want to follow you? Yeah, uh, head to uh, Instagram. I'm typically on Instagram. Oh, and I wanted to share with you, yeah. since uh, the beginning of March, I've received approximately 6,000 emails, unsolicited emails from actors, you know, because there's not much work Dude, happening. 6,000? Yeah, so I've... 6,000. It's approximately 1,000 a week. I've wow. been through about almost 4,000, but I'm... I can only dedicate so many hours a day to respond to talent. And I know I'm behind. I hear a lot from talent. You haven't gotten back to me. So I say, hey, hit me, hit me up in my DMs on, um, on Instagram. So y you can find me uh, on Instagram when I am not in casting sessions or if I'm not um, uh, hosting my 10-minute uh, generals. So you can certainly reach out to me, send me a DM on Instagram, uh, but most likely I would forward you to my website to either sign up for my newsletter or you can send your materials uh, through my website. And um, Katie Griffin Casting, that's K-A-T-I-E-G-R-I-F-F-I-N, casting.com, um, or just go to Katie Griffin, or at Katie Griffin, that's my, uh, Katie Griffin Casting is my handle. Yeah, or Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> the only thing I don't have is TikTok. I have not no. gotten into that. I have a, 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 an account, but I'm like, I haven't done anything yet. So I'll get there. Too much. I watch and they're a lot of fun. I feel too pressured to perform and I don't want to fall down that <laughs> rabbit hole. Right. right. I don't want to do that. Well, not Instagram. But I love to watch them. Fun to watch, right? Well, now Instagram has one called Re Reels now, where it's kind of like similar. I don't know how if that's yep. off, but we'll see. But yeah, 
I've seen people use them and I need to, I, I'm really technically savvy. I cannot master this for some reason. So I need someone to teach me how to uh, create a reel because right. I want to add uh, still images. I don't want to just do video and I, Got that's it. where I'm getting tripped up. Got so. it. Okay. Yeah. I, I have yeah. to work on it too. I haven't really played with it too much. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, it. I got to keep up with what the kids are doing these right? days. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to stay relevant, Keisha. I got to stay relevant. <laughs> <laughs> you the cool kids. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, it's wild. It's but yeah, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I have to say, I turned on um, dispatches from elsewhere and I saw you and I was so proud. Because I said, oh my gosh, I'm so proud to see how far she's come. Yeah, it's um, been a journey, I tell you. It's been a journey. And yeah. I'm finally, I feel like I'm finally kind of, you know, coming into myself, you know, so yeah. I'm excited, you know. Yeah. It took me some time, but I'm getting there, so I'm really yeah. excited. And it's okay, you know, everybody's different, and, and I'm just, now I'm really enjoying and really enjoying the process of being a an artist, you know? So yeah, I love it. Yeah. Now's the time to shine and just really like kick back and really enjoy yourself because you may get to a point where you didn't really stop and enjoy the process. And then it's like, what, where'd all that time go? What even was that? You know, you weren't really experiencing or like being in the moment. Um, but it's really great to see how far you've come. I know that I used to bring you in a lot for nurse roles, young mom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, lots of young moms and uh, nurse or uh, young doctor, yeah. things of yeah. things like that. And um, I just love to see you. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, thanks, Katie. This yeah. is so amazing. I so appreciate this. And I wish you nothing but the best. Thank and you. Continue to thrive in your um, your casting company, and you. that you just stay encouraged because I know that you know you. I'm sure that there's times when it's like ah, you know. So just stay encouraged, and um, I know that you're gonna continue to be just amazing. So. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow Katie at Katie Griffin Casting on Instagram. She's also on Facebook and she also has a website as well you can check out. And also when you get a chance, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as well as give me a like and a shout out on Instagram at Keisha Elaine. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.